Nor sentence. They have come to me in search of instruction to prepare themselves to enter the faction. Also, many of them have a natural grasp of language that can shatter the crust of the most hardened individual. Sensets. She bows slightly. Yes, I am a member of the Society of Sensation. Yeah, our faction believes that one should experience as much of the multiverse as possible. And the girls here are in training to be sensets? Yes, I hope that by learning the art of language and its subtleties, that the patrons and the students here may learn more about themselves. One is only as limited as their command of the language. To be able to employ language to evoke emotions in others is a tremendous skill. I see. Can I ask you some other questions? Yes. Ooh. Would you like to join me? Jeez. Being a bit direct. So, if I may ask Lady Grace, the wings on your back. You are not human, I take it. She's one of the fiends. One of the succubi she is. She'll take your measure, and then she'll take your soul to the lower planes. So she will. Her companion is correct. I am a lesser Tanari. More specific specifically, a succubus. Ah. She gives a soft sigh. I'm afraid we're a little too common in the lower planes and elsewhere for our own good. Most of my race spend their time seducing mortals with various pleasures of the flesh. And you? I like to think that I have dist distanced myself from that. It is ultimately a trivial and non-productive way for one to, s to spend one's time here in the multiverse. There is much more to life, wouldn't you agree? Perhaps. Or perhaps so. Can I ask you some other questions? What is this place? I think I've already asked this. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. How may I help you? How may I help you? Came here looking for help. Perhaps you can help me. Help? What kind of help are you looking for? I seem to have lost my memories. In doing so, I've lost myself. You've been stricken with amnesia. Fall from grace looks pained. How terrible. Do you have any idea how it happened? Not really, at least not that I can remember. I woke up on a slab in the mortuary and everything before that is black. You awoke in the mortuary. I think the dustman mistook me for being dead, or I was dead, or something. All I know is that I regenerate rune wounds quickly. I could be a mortal, but I don't even know that for sure. Fall from Grace seems to be appraising you with renewed interest. Those scars are on your body. She reached out a hand, as if to touch you. May I? Um, sure. Hmm. <laughs> uh, sure. Fall, f Fall from Grace drags her finger across your chest lightly, tracing the edges of your scar and following the curves where they bended to some of your tattoos. She seems fascinated. These scars do look as if they would have taken several lifetimes to accumulate. They certainly do, though some are more recent. Fall from Grace steps back. Some of these, those wounds would have been fatal to a normal man. She taps her chin, thinking, what do you intend to do now? Hmm... I need to get my memories back and my life back. I intend to scour the planes and search inside myself until I can piece together who I am and what brought me to this state. Far from Grace is still thinking, her finger tapping on her chin. I must say, I've never met a man who had lost himself in the literal sense. She raises an eyebrow. Forgive me, but your condition is intriguing. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. It is that. Far from Grace nods. If it will help, you are welcome to tour the brothel. Several of our students are well versed in the verbal arts. Perhaps some of them will be able to rekindle your memories. Updated Perhaps. Can you tell me about the sensates? Our sensates. The sensates of the factions are the faction of sigil that is devoted to experience. Without experience, without sensation, we are blinded to much of the multiverse. Thus, sensates seek to experience as much as possible. When all is experienced, then the truth of the multiverse shall reveal itself. Interesting philosophy. Could I join the sensates? She smiles. To join the senses, one needs to be a student of life. I meant I was interested in joining their faction. Of course, forgive my teasing. Grace nods. If you wish to join the senses, I would inquire at the Civic Fest Hall. Someone there should be able to help you. Uh, other questions? Have you ever heard of a night hag named Rabel? I'm familiar with the name. Fall from Grace pauses and thinks for a moment. Rumors cluster thickly about that name, and most tend to discount her as myth. But I suspect that she did exist, and that she made quite an impression in the cage during her stay here. She looks puzzled. Why do, you, why do you ask? I intend to seek her out. Grace raises an eyebrow. Truly? I find myself compelled to ask why. I need information that she has. Is this information available for no, from no one else? I suspect that only Ravel possesses the knowledge I need. Updated my journal. Grace rests her hand slightly on your arm. Consider this. If Ravel does indeed exist, then she is extremely powerful and cunning. If a fraction of the stories of her activities are true, then she is a creature that has... 
discovered new meanings of evil. To search for her is not a quest to be undertaken lightly. I realize that. Do you know anything about th anything else about Ravel? Jesus. She was said to be one of the hags of the Grey Waste, and that she was believed to possess powers and a cunning far beyond those of her sisters. She came to Sigil long ago, and in addition to the evils she committed during her stay, rumor has it that her actions threatened the cage itself. Now she primarily exists only as fiction, a figure in children's stories. Grace pauses. I imagine the Lady of Pain dealt with her as all threats to Sigil are dealt with. How? Ravel was most likely sent to a maze, one of the ladies' prisons. Mazes? What are those? My journal. Grace place, places her hands together, thumbs and fingers touching, forming a rough circle. The lady is said to have the power to take pieces of sigil. You watch in surprise as a ghostly image of Grace's little finger pulls itself from the hand and floats into the air, curling into a small circle and make a maze. Go on. The small ghostly circle floats in the air, then begins slowly rotating. The piece of sigil she takes hold... The she takes, holds the prisoner. There is no escaping being mazed. It can happen at any time, while walking down the street, through a door, she claps her hands, and then, you are somewhere else. Inside the ghostly circle, you suddenly see a flicker of movement, like someone walking inside. Go on. Grace continues. The tiny ghost maze reflected in her eyes. It is said there is a portal that leads out of each maze, but they are difficult, or they are difficult to find. Perhaps they are left, left in to give the prisoner hope. Perhaps they are left in to torture the prisoner. The ghostly maze dissolves. Perhaps it is both. I see. Can you tell me more about this plane that Ravel is from? The Grey Waste. A blighted plane that lies effectively between... Uh, Bator and the Abyss. It is frequently a battleground in the Blood War. Do you know, any, do you know what happened to Ravel? Ravel was most likely sent to a maze when... Okay, yeah, yeah. Is there anyone else who might know of her? Or about her? Someone in the Fest Hall may know about... May know more of her? Other questions? The only thing I have left to say is, would you like to join me on my travels? Anna stiffens, then starts muttering under her breath. Who's to say she'll be coming with us? <laughs> we don't need the likes of her, so we don't. By that fiendling. Mark clicks his teeth together. I'm all for the succubus coming with us. The powers know you're about as fun as passing a caltrop through your bowels. You'd best latch your bone box, Skull, or I'll rattle you so hard they'll be picking your teeth off the spire. Travel with you? Fall... From Grace smiles slightly, she seems to be ignoring your companions. That's rather forward of you. I'd rather be honest with my intentions. You seem extremely pleasant and well versed in the ways of the ways of the planes. A companion with that knowledge with that kind of knowledge would be welcome. Ooh. I mean how exciting can this place be? Jeez. Hmm. Yeah, I'd rather be honest with my intentions. Sure. Hey, wait just a minute. I'm the one well versed in the planes. That's my job, Chief. Having too knowledgeable about the planes in our band seems pretty smart to me. Besides, I said pleasant too, Mort. Pleasant on the eyes, maybe. Looks to me like all some shit has to do is show a little skin and you'll sign her right up. <laughs> Mort falls silent. Not that I mind that, really. I just thought I'd mention it. Noted. Mort, look. Lady Grace, excuse me if I'm being too forward, but would you care to travel with us? I'd appreciate your- I appreciate your candor, I shall counter with some of my own. Why should I travel with you? Ah, oh, here we go. You mean you wouldn't be interested in travelling with an immortal amnesiac who is searching the planes for himself? Oh, I would be extremely interested. She smiles slightly. Such a suggestion is intriguing. Make no mistake about that. Then, you would like to travel with me then. If you wish me to, then there is something you must do for me. There are ten students in this, estab in this establishment. I would like you to speak to all of them, then return to me with your thoughts. Then we shall see if we shall travel together or not. I will go speak to them, then I will return when I have spoken to all of them. Ten! Ten! Oh my god. Are these all the named people that are in the rooms? Wait, how many rooms are there? One. Can I use the arrow keys? One. Two. God, this is slow. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Yeah, there's ten. So there's one person in each room, I guess. I never looted this. Oh, shoot. Quick save, just in case this is the one thing that pisses somebody off. And it didn't. Nice. Copper. A love letter. Oh! This is a passionate, steamy, and rather graphic love letter 
who it's to and whom it's from, however, are quite vague. Yeah, I'll take it. That's my business now. Oh man, I wanted to read it. This is the research journal of a linguist named Finnum. Wait a minute. I probably have to get... I probably have to get this book back for Finnum. Well, I mean, I've not spoke to him yet, so, yeah. Delora. I guess you're the first one. Hey, Spooky Josh. I think your name is. I can't really read it. <laughs> I apologize. How's it going? Oh, crap. I wanted to click on you. This dark-haired, pale-skinned woman has a cultured, refined look about her. As she turns to you, you note that her eyes, which you had previously thought to be grey, are the colour of brushed steel. Did I end up beating Breath of Fire 2? Uh, yeah. A uh, really long time ago. <laughs> well, not a really long time ago. Maybe like a month and a half ago. If you check my collections, it's like the the entire game's there. Uh, greetings. The woman's voice is so soft, calm, and without inflection. It has a certain far away quality, as if someone or somehow not attached to her. Greetings. I'm called Dolora. May I serve you somehow? In what ways can you serve me, Dolora? Yeah, no worries. She blinks her eyes, then touches her hand to her heart. Bowing her head slightly, I am able to debate any scholarly or academic matter quite proficiently. If that is your wish, I am well, also well versed in various games of strategy. Should you wish to play something, though I have the materials for few such games here. Hmm. So we have to, like, debate with every one of them, I guess. Wait, if I wanted to, to bear, I get the fi I probably need intelligence, don't I? What is my intelligence? 16. Shoot. I'm a thief. Um, actually, wait. Doesn't Dakon have a tattoo? I don't know why I went to the character sheet. Dakon, Dakon. Aha! Plus two to intelligence. Perfect. So that'll work. What is your I'll just get rid of my wisdom tattoo. Teachings. Teach me of the art. Thank you. I didn't want to do that. Let's go. My unusable item place in backpack. Yeah, I'm running out of space. Um, right. What is it I wanted to do? Alright, Dakon, I'm sorry, but I'm removing this tattoo. Uh, ah, oh, bugger. Is it this one? Yeah, tattoo is spirit. Just give that to somebody. <laughs> there, now I should have 18. There we go. Right, I should be able to beat her at her game now. Where is she? There. Whew. Alright, Dolores. Let's do this. No, it's not Dolores, it's Dolora. Just how might you serve me? Something of more physical nature. Uh. So, a debate. Debate, you say? The Laura nods. That is correct. I am neither a tome nor a tutor. I have no desire to educate my patrons. Should you have a matter to discuss, however, the 15 factions and their effect on Sigillian... Or Sigillian. Sigillian sounds better. Politics, the most effective battle stratagems for warring in... What? Acheron? The meaning of existence itself, I would be most pleased to choose a counterpoint and engage you in debate. Ooh, choose a topic, see if you can best her. You choose a topic and begin. The debate lasts a long time as the two of you exchange points and counterpoints, each attempting to meth methodically undermine the other's position. As you speak, a strange feeling begins to come over you, a memory trying to surface. Allow the memory to surface. Why would you ever repress it? Memories of a great hall begin to form in your mind, a vast place full of well-dressed elites. A formal ball was taking place, before you was a small, impeccably dressed fellow who wore a golden medallion. It was emblazoned with a symbol you dimly recall as the sign of one. The two of you stood in a circle of onlookers who have gathered to listen to your debate. Continue the memory. But, but that's impossible. The man was saying, looking perplexed. Oh, but it is. You recall yourself replying, I've made several inarguable points and given you a number of examples. You simply don't exist. But you can't... Were I to accept that, I... I... Continue the memory. Yes, you'd cease to exist. Without a flash of light or puff of smoke, with no fanfare of any sort, the man was simply gone. The onlookers ooed and aahed. Some clapped. You remember giving a flourishing bow and walking away, a small satisfied smile upon your lips. You suddenly realize Dolora is watching you closely. Are you feeling well? We might finish our discussion at another time, should you like. No, let's continue the debate. The hard, 
As hard-pressed as you are to beat Dolores' infallible sense of logic, you eventually win out. She merely nods in approval. You are a most skilled debater. There is... Oh, this there is no denying. I do feel, though, that I had... That had I time to perform some research, you might not have bested me. Thanks. Dolores nods. If you would like, we can debate once more upon the same topic. I could argue your position this time, should you desire it. Wait, are you always so ruthless in a debate? Dolores nods. Mist Mistress Grace instructed me to show no mercy for another of her students. Wait, for another of her students always allows a patron to win after a lengthy debate. It was Mistress Grace's desire that I provide a different sort of experience for the clientele. Oh, I see. Can we play a game now? Of course. Is there anything in particular you wish to play? No, I don't really remember any games. Here then, allow me to show you one. Delora brings out a thin... Is that like lacquered box? Which unfolds into a small board marked with a grid. The contents of the box prove to be a number of polished stone chips. Half of them black, half of them white. This game goes by many names. Shall I explain the rules to you? Yes, please. Is this Othello? I don't know if that's what it's called. But I... I can't remember. Dolores explains to you the rules of the game. How the chips are moved, how one bests one opponent, or one's opponent. It seems somehow faintly familiar to you. The rules are simple, yes, but a great deal of complexity lies within the game itself. It takes a great deal of time to master. Shall we play? Yes, let's. As you play, another memory. I don't know if it is actually another one, but we'll see. As you play, you come to realize that you've done so before. You recall various ploys and strategies that have won you previous games. You employ every trick you know to beat her. Suddenly, a strange feeling comes over you. A memory, trying to surface. Allow the memory to surface. Memories of a smoke-filled field of battle begin to fill your mind. Atop a great hill overlooking the fighting you sat, mounted upon a massive, four-legged beast. The braying of horns carried your orders to the troops below. Even as you watched, your forces divided, fleeing left and right as the foreign army fought its way up the hill to slay the enemy lord, you. The fools, you had thought, lips curl curling into a wicked smile. My knights shall charge down the, the hillside and stop their advance in an instant. And at that very moment, my retreating footmen will fall in to crush their flanks. Ah, yet another victory soon to be mine. You suddenly realize Dolora is watching you intently. Are you feeling well? We might take up the game another day if you so wish. Now let's continue the game. Dolora plays excellently, counteracting all but your most crafty moves, but eventually your feints and calculating maneuvers win over her well-crafted strategies. She nods approvingly as she begins to put the game away. You are a fine player, perhaps a master. I commend you for your skill. Thanks, but you always play so merciful mercifully, or mercilessly, even. So, I understand, here's some questions. Oh! Dolora casts her eyes to the floor with a sound that might be a sad sigh. I'm willing to serve you as a patron, but have no wish to answer other questions at this time. My apologies, but I fear you shall simply have to bear with that for the time being. What's wrong? Anything I can help you with? My journal. She looks up from the floor and into your eyes. Once more you're struck by the pale smoothness, smoothness of skin. The cold depths of her silvery eyes. No, no, I fear not. My troubles are a matter of the heart. In time, I think, all things shall be resolved. Are you certain there's nothing I could do? Certain? Delora pauses as, as if thinking. No, I am not. My first love, Merriman, possesses still the keys to my heart. So long as he has them, I shan't be free to love another. This is the cause of my melancholy. Ooh, Merriman. Or Merriman. Right. Uh... I mean, I'll take it on. Yeah, because it's a good idea to. More XP and all that stuff. Okay, so... Why don't you seek him out? Seek him out. Speak with him. Dolores shakes her head. I may not leave this place. The reason why... The reasons why are deeply personal and not to be shared with strangers. Even ones who might bestow a kindness upon me, but suffice to say that I cannot seek out Merriman myself. Then I shall find this Merriman and speak to him on your behalf. Dolores nods the slightest hint of a smile appearing on her lips. She bows her head. Were you to find and speak with Merriman, I would be most grateful. He is a member of the Society of Sensation. So you may wish to speak with us to ask for him at the Civic Fest Hall. You got it, sister. I guess. That is what we will do. I'll return when I find him. I will. Shorted. I want too bad. I might want to just keep up my, uh... My intelligence. Because I, I, have, I have a feeling that's what I need for most of this. Yeah. Hmm. 
Wait, so if I speak with a modern, what actually happens? This strange cubic creature seems to have as much machine... Well, seems to be as much machine as it is organic. As you approach the thing, it silently stares at you with wide unblinking eyes. Its face hasn't the slightest trace of emotion in it, on it. Come on, Chief. We're in a building full of some of the sexiest chits this side of the multiverse, and you're stopping to talk to moderns? Okay. What can you tell me about them, Mort? Mort makes a noise of utter disgust. What's there to, s What's there to say? Annoying little clockwork pests. They're always working to impose law and order upon the multiverse. Not good, mind you. Just law. Let's just forget about him and go chat up the ladies, eh? Ignore Mort and greet the modern. Its voice has a metallic reverberating quality to it, as if it were more a sound played out on some warped musical instrument than true speech. Your greeting is returned. There is a soft click as the creature blinks. An awkward silence hangs in the air between the two of you. Questions. Identify yourself to us. I'm not sure who I am. We would know why this is so. I don't know myself, I just can't remember. All things should have a name, all things should be identified. We find your answer unsatisfactory. But it shall have to suffice for the present. The creature pauses and blinks at you. We would identify ourselves as moderns. Quadrone type. Winged variant to the subject. Okay. Right, I've just realised. I did forget something. Oops. I need to go back to the curiosity. The, 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 the curiosity shop. In order to buy that metallic bloody cube. Because you speak about it to, to the moderns and they essentially tell you. The sweet smell of sensates and governors. <laughs> I find it weird that Mark can smell anything, to be honest. Given the fact that he is, he is just a skull. All right. Okay, here we go. I'll sell stuff first. Right, yes I am. The weapons and charms. Right, so now I can actually sell everything. I've got five handkerchiefs. Make it revolve him. Silver earring, gold. Oh man. Gold, copper, gold ring. Nice. I get 940 for that. Not bad, really. Yeah, not really. And now I speak with her again. And I am the exotic. The metallic cube figurine. There it is. I'll take it. 1500. Jesus. Right, now I can go and speak with the moderns. I knew I should have got it when I had the chance, to begin with, as opposed to just waiting and being like, eh, yeah, it'll be fine. But I don't know what else she has that's worthwhile. Oh, I'm just realising I'm, I'm running out of space for people. I only have one more spot, and I've got two party members joining very soon. Oh well. Right, so now if I speak with the moderns about this cube... I mean, I couldn't speak about the cube before, because I didn't have it on me. I had some questions. Do you know what this little cube-like toy creature is? The modern, its appearance identical in every aspect but size to the object in your hands, blinks once, twice, then speaks. The object is a portal cube. The user is to position the appendages of the portal cube in such a manner that it, that it will activate. Once activated, the portal cube will transport the user to whatever destination it was tuned to during its creation. What's the proper position to activate this one? We do not have that information. Over 97% of all portal cubes function in a slightly different manner. We were not present at the construction of the subject's portal cube, nor have we ever been given instructions as to its use. Should the subject desire to utilize a portal cube, they will have to determine its, determine its method of operation and destination via experimentation. Other questions? Where will this cube take its user? Do not have that information? Okay. That's all I wanted, I guess. <laughs> right, um, I don't really want to use the cube. I'd rather do the brothel stuff first. Honestly. Right, so if I go in here, this is where there's like somebody hiding behind this, I guess. Maybe not hiding, but they're behind this. They're changing or something. As you... As you make to search the armoire, its handles suddenly yank out of your grasp as the drawers slam themselves shut. A disdainful hmph <laughs> issues from the cabinet. Hello? Hello indeed. The armoire gives another hmph. 
So what have we here? A rogue after some lady's frilly undergarments? Hmm. You talk? Do I? Why, yes I do. Who are you? I am Lewis, and who are you? Thoughtless, uncouth fellow rummaging about in other people's things? Never mind that. What are you doing here? Well, sir, if you must know, I am being an armoire. But why are you being an armoire in this brothel? I don't know if it's an armoire or armour. I don't really know how you say it. I happen to have become an armoire because I want to be an armoire. Thank you very much. It's not to watch the ladies undressing, nor to have them place their soft, sweet-smelling undergarments in my drawers where they can rub against my skin. Ew. <laughs> Such accusations are an insult to a practitioner of the magical arts. You're merely soaking in the experience of what it means to be an armoire. The sights, the smells, the sensations. So all the women, or all the women know about this then? Yes, yes they do, and they wholeheartedly approve of, well, not with their entire hearts exactly, and while they have not spoken of their approval in my presence, since they are not exactly aware that I am <laughs> that I am an armoire, I would not want them to know that I am anything but, and so have not been able to inquire upon the matter. <laughs> I'll need something from you to keep quiet about this one. God, this is the best. It's just really strange. I don't know, should I do that now or in a bit? Yeah, sure. Very well. Posh, open the third drawer, you scallywag. As you reach your hand into the drawer, it slams shut on your fingers with great force. Searing pain races through your hand as you withdraw your battered fingers. Cretin, idiot. Open the drawer, I said, and you reach in. He slams his drawer again for emphasis, then begins shaking with laughter. Jesus. Yeah, I'll just leave him. Screw you, Lewis. Or Louise. Who else can I speak with? Is there anybody in here? We have Juliet. So this dark-haired young woman is staring listlessly off into space, sighing miserably and occasionally picking at the seams of her green velvet gown. It's difficult to discern whether she's depressed or simply bored. Greetings. She gives you only the briefest of glances before staring off into the distance once more. Greetings, yes. I am named Juliet. How may I? Oh, never thou mind. Leave me be, please. She gives an exasperated sigh. What's wrong? Oh, nothing at all. Only that I spend my days gazing into the face of mediocrity. Seeing if anything can erase its dreadful, tedious passage. Is your life so tedious? Alas, it is. She sighs, closing her eyes and massaging her temples. Dreadfully boring. Perhaps I can make it... Less boring for you, my lady. No, no. Tis kind of thee to offer, though. I am already with a man, sir, and I do love him dearly. Tis just that I wish she taps her finger against her chin. Something more of a liaison. A liaison. Is the relationship lacking, then? The only thing it lacks is excitement, sir. Our families took the news of our courtship splendidly. His siblings love my siblings, and our friends think our union to be blessed by the powers themselves. All fine and good, but things are going, she frowns, so smoothly. Tis not right to have such a trouble-free courtship. I don't know about that. Dost thou not? Hast thou ever had such a courtship? She glances briefly at you. Tud seems that thy life is filled with a variety of problems, judging by the pallor of thy skin. I can't remember any courtships I have had. Um... It's not something I care to speak of. The remnants of the ones I have encountered suggest that I may have had some problems. Yeah. That's probably the more accurate one. Tis just that all my friends have such interesting relationships, one fraught with turmoil, feuding families, daggers at one another's backs, poison, mad siblings, and irate fathers with large swords. I have a lover whose family loves me, and whom the world loves. She sighs again, a great source of annoyance. How I wish I could formulate some way to spice things up. Mark floats close to you, whispering, I feel sorry for her lover, he doesn't know how bad, it, how bad he has it. A shit like this is nothing but trouble. What did you have in mind, Juliet? I'm not sure. Some element of danger or jealousy. Something intense. Now oh, there we go. I can, pre I can pretend to be a jealous suitor, if you want. Juliet glances at you, then scoffs. Oh, I highly doubt that... Hmm. Actually, that idea tis not half as adult as I had first thought. Thou dost certainly look dangerous enough. She looks you in the eye, as if appraising a horse. Art thou as rugged and tough as thy appearance would indicate? They don't make them any tougher than me, I assure you. Thou shalt do this for me, then? Yes, I'll do it. Excellent, my love, Montag, may be found within the civic... Uh, Festhall. I thank thee. Of course, I'll go speak with him. My 
journal. Oh, damn. More quests. Hooray! So there's that. Where's that, like, redhead? Can't remember what her name was. Vivian or something? There she is. She's fucking going all over the place. Vivian! This tall, elegant woman with her sharp features and regal demeanor is a striking example of aristocratic beauty. Her clothes appear to be spun of silver thread and a small file dangles from her necklace. She's perfumed with an exotic er erotic scent that seems to draw you forward uh, toward her. God. Greetings. She looks you over, arcing an, arcing an eyebrow with what you sense to be disdain. Greetings, my name is Vivian. Am I to presume I am being summoned? Um... No, I just had some questions. She nods imperiously. Go on, then. What are you doing here? Aside from my work as a student here, I am looking for something, actually. You would not happen to have smelled it, would you? A student? Vivian nods, looking vaguely bored. That is correct. Mistress Grace tutors us in the art of language and conversation. The ability to affect another with one's words, and to gain new insights into both them and ourselves. All the prostitutes here are such students. You asked if I had smelled something. Yes, I have, I have a particular scent that seems to have gone wandering. It is somewhat difficult to keep to keep in one place. I hope that someone did not take it by accident. Though you never know, with the ladies around here, she frowns. So, by any chance, have you smelled it somewhere? You smell... <laughs> you smell quite nice right now, you know. She scowls for a moment and then smiles at you. Yes, yes, and I thank you for your compliment, but I assure you that this particular aroma is nothing to my personal scent. She sighs. How can a scent go wandering? Vivian shakes her head. I had meant to infer that it had been taken. The ladies here are a bit jealous at times, and have been known to take my various perfumes for themselves. This time, though, someone has absconded with my own personal scent. I worked on that scent, perfected it, and now, poof, tis gone. I need not bear such annoyances. Vivian stomps her feet. I want that scent back, and I want it now. Uh, how would you know it if you found it? You would know it by smell, I assure you. Tis quite striking, especially to men. I can help you. Vivian seems dubious. Are you certain? I do not wish to impose. No imposition. I am pleased to help such a lovely woman as yourself. Anna mumbles something angrily. You catch the words piking and idiot stick. I keep forgetting that Anna has a thing for us, so I shouldn't be flirting with everybody. <laughs> Whatever. Vivian smiles and nods at you. You are too kind. Very well. If you run across it, please let me know. I am somewhat an anxious to get it back. A one-of-a-kind scent, really? Okay. Ask you about something else. Nah. So that's another quest. Holy Christ, it is! Find the scent. Oh, wait, it's, it's in the thing? I mean, if it's in the place, then that's pretty simple. Yeah, seemingly. I mean, it seems like it's in the place. It sounds that way. Am I supposed to just ask around? Oh, there's Dolora. I've already, like, conversed with her, so maybe... Oh. Did you find him? Oh, not yet. So I can't go any further with that. Alright, cool. So I need to find a scent. Either way. Nenny Nine Eyes. What a name. This petite, attractive young woman is smiling blissfully and humming to herself. Her wide, pale blue eyes seem to be constantly... or seems to constantly drink in her surroundings as she looks about. Greetings. The, the smiling young woman curtsies gracefully and looks up... looks up to you, smiling. Well met, good sir. I'm... I'm Nenny. And how are you, this fine... Uh, she suddenly notices your scars and places a gloved hand over her mouth. Oh my, you're hurt, she blinks. All over. Mort spins around you, mocking the girl's obviousness. Powers above, Chief. She's right. I never noticed before. You're covered in scars. <laughs> oh, my God. They're all old scars. I'll